Thank you very much. Um, when I admitted my presentation, I was asked by the preparation team um, how the topic of vegan organic farming fits actually into a animal rights content. And um, well, I was gulping for a moment and then I said, well, it's basically the consequence um, of animal rights. Um, if we are having criticism about how animals are kept, um, we then progress to how to get out of animal agriculture and then we have to find other ways of food production. Um, so I think, um, at least for my side, um, vegan organic food production is uh, like a core subject uh, that every animal rights activist should be know, uh, should know about. Um, so um, my talk is going to be zapping through the envi and environmental aspects of global agriculture. Um, most of that had been um, um, subject to several talks already on the conference. Um, then I will derive uh, a few conclusions and then I will raise the question whether vegan organic agriculture is actually a solution to uh, ending animal agriculture. And then I will turn towards um, the political um, practice of uh, implementing uh, animal rights uh, in a society to societal discourse. Um, that's actually a very short uh, term because I don't know who of you actually um, are familiar with vegan organic production, so um, I'm going to have a small emphasis on that. Afterwards, we have the discuss discussion, and um, so I'm going to start uh, without further to do. Well, we all know about the damaging of effects of agriculture, and much of that is actually effect or, or caused by animal production. So we have de deforestation, monoculture crops, grazing on intensified grassland, and we actually have a quite drastic loss of forest, uh, especially there where we have the bios biodiversity centers um, alongside the equator. On the other side, we have in the northern hemisphere uh, actually a small gain in forests. Um, still, most meat is actually consumed in the northern countries. So that's actually a very good indicator how we're kind of getting resources from the um, countries of the southern hemisphere or so-called third world countries, whatever. Um, and uh, we're actually trying to um, preserve our own natural habitat um, in the northern countries. Then, of course, you all know um, the problems uh, about cattle feedlots, pigs farms. That's actually uh, an example from Germany. Um, here you have the slurry container. Um, and then the slurry gets, gets spread um, onto the surface. And from there, it runs off uh, into the surface or the groundwater. So, um, also, another problem is pesticide uh, use uh, that is triggering species extinction. Uh, so from bringing out the slurry, uh, it's just a very short way um, and it's come to attention quite, quite recently um, that the Gulf of Mexico is actually um, dying off, especially the coastal waters are um, um, dead zones caused by um, the intake of nitrogen and thus um, leading to a lack of oxygen um, without um, uh, any resources for um, sea life uh, to thrive there. I'm going to zap through this. Um, you probably all know this. Um, this is a German chart of uh, FIO uh, data uh, globally, we have 
um, about two thirds of grassland and one third of arable land. And 30% of the arable land, about 30%, is used to produce animal feed. So, again, like this is the agricultural land globally. And here we have 80% of the agricultural land um, is used to feed animals, while it only produces about 20% of the food calories globally. So we're actually having a very inefficient way of producing food or uh, feeding people. Another chart I want to give you, um, that's uh, European data by Eternity, a uh, Swiss uh, NGO um, whose <clears throat> aim is to um, calculate uh, climate footprints uh, for individual meals. And they say that about 30% um, of our climate, European climate emissions is caused by food, by the food sector. And we all know, uh, studies, independent studies have shown um, that um, you can have a significant impact uh, in choosing a vegan or a vegetarian diet. It's up to 70%. So in summary, we have forest loss in the biodiversity centers. We have forest gain in the northern hemisphere. Um, and agriculture is a major, major driver of environmental damage globally. Animal production is high land use, but little food calories. Animal products have a high climate footprint. So animal agriculture is a major contributor to climate change. We had heard this uh, on Friday, uh, Friday evening. Um, and the food sector is responsible for one third of our anthropogenic climate emissions. So, and adopting vegan, vegan diets can cut these, this, these 30% by more than 50%. Also, other aspects are critical. Working conditions in modern agriculture um, are widely ethically, socially, and economically unacceptable. We have the greenhouse hell in Almeria in Spain, where illegal immigrants, sans papiers, refugees, uh, work there in horrible conditions. We have the situation of slaughterhouse workers, especially in East Europe, um, who also work in horrible conditions. We have field workers in South America um, or in the plantations in, uh, in Asia where they are exposed to harmful substances, for example, pesticides. We have small peasants that are driven from the land, from their land, and forced to either migrate, migrate to cities or become landless and stay on, uh, as day laborers um, in the rural countryside. And last not least, um, we have the horrible conditions in which non-human animals are kept and treated as a commodity. And that is referring both to um, farmed, so-called farmed animals as well as wild animals. So the conclusions out of that would be Changing agriculture is paramount. Agriculture that produces more plant-based foods for direct human consumption is more land use efficient, which would then leave area open to be rewilded, uh, to have high con conservation value, etc. So requirements for the agriculture of the future would be either to be stock-free or at least stock-reduced, to be climate neutral, to be land use efficient, for example, um, uh, biointensive, um, to be ecological, that means both conserving and promoting biodiversity, and to be ethically, socially, and economically unexploitive. So actually, we're standing in front of something which we could actually call a, a agricultural revolution that is tending towards stock-free and more ecological ways of production. So 
Could vegan organic agriculture be a solution? To assess this question, um, this mode of production, uh, it would be necessary to define it. So vegan organic agriculture actually means that it's vegan, a, ve a way of production that implements the concepts of veganism. Uh, I just got here the veganism def definition by the vegan society. Uh, you all know that. And to be organic, that means implementing the norms and standards of organic farming, that is internationally the IFAM norms, of within the production, not only the agricultural production, but also the processing and the trading of foods. That means theoretically, stock-free agriculture, that we don't use any, any commercial non-human animal production. Uh, it's actually prohibited. So slaughtering, buying, selling, using their produce, um, to, ha to raise uh, an, uh, an income uh, would then be prohibited. No use and no application of fertilizer products, so-called inputs, that come from non-human animal production, manures, slurries, etc. And also, no use and application of slaughterhouse wastes. That would be horn shaves, horn meal, bone meal, blood meal, no fish meal as well. And also in regard of the wild animals, preferation of non-lethal plant protection, that means to refrain from biological pesticides. On the side of the organic, that's organic agriculture, uh, that means to be free from GMO, to be free from synthetic pesticides, and fertilizers, and working with ecosystems rather than against them. And also, essentially would that mean we would need a farmer, a producer, a gardener, um, that aims to run the farm operation independently from animal agriculture production. And that would be a concept of agriculture that is both eco ecologically, ecologically sustainable and in alignment with veganism. The practical implementation. That would concern now farm management practices, and I'm going to use some terms which some of you might not know. Um, if you have a question about these uh, aspects, um, you just can raise your hands and I can explain them to you. Long crop rotations. A crop rotation is the rotation of different crops over the time. So one season you have potatoes, next season you have um, whatever. Um, intercropping, that means that you have a main crop and after that, before the season starts to uh, stop, you have um, a crop just in between. So usually you have either uh, winter crops after the main crop or um, uh, that go over winter, or you have um, fields that fall follow. That means that you don't grow anything there. Um, also, you use green manures, that is um, like biomass. You, you grow a special crop that is not intended for uh, food production, but it is only t there to, to um, produce biomass uh, without using any nutrients or essentially hardly any nutrients. Then, of course, you all know this, if you have a garden, composting is a good measure to bring back nutrients, uh, nutrients into the um, food production. Um, that means organic waste processing in general. Um, you can use mulching, that is, you take biomass and you just spread it um, on top of the, of the soil. Uh, then the soil organisms will just come and um, pull the, the biomass into the, into the soil. And then, of course, you have habitat or biotope improvement, which is 
quite essential um, to have a running organic system. There we have to consider that non-human animals don't create nutrients. Usually when you talk to a farmer, you say, they say, well, it's not working without animals. Um, he's, in one regard, if you remember what I said yesterday on the, on the open mic, um, he's on, the, on one side, he's right, but we don't need farm animals because farm animals don't create nutrients, but additional nutrients come from either from grassland biomass or they come from arable farming crops that are dedicated to animal feed. We just saw this in the graph earlier. So conventional slaughterhouse wastes are not in accordance with a vegan recycling system because if we oppose slaughtering animals, we also oppose using their wastes. Wild animals that live freely and voluntarily on the farm premise are part of the system. So they are not to be locked out, um, but they're part of the agricultural ecosystem. There's an analogy to vegan arguments. Plants are the only species kingdom that are able to turn non-consumable resources into consumable resources. And just as it is more efficient to consume plants by humans directly without detouring through non-human animals, um, it is more efficient to use non-consumable plant-based biomass as fertilizers for food crops. Also, habitat improvement is something that is really, really important. Um, we are um, extremely dependent um, on functioning ecosystems um, that kind of um, move into where we uh, grow our crops. And um, biodiversity is maintained or encouraged by, for example, hedges, flowering plants, soil covers, small field sizes. So if you reduce the area and you have more fringes, you have more biodiversity. Polyculture uh, is something, or companion planting, if you have two crops that actually grow really well together, there's a good example. Um, many uh, companion plantings also taste really well together. So for example, you have tomatoes that go well with um, uh, basil, or you have onions that go well with, um, uh, with carrots because the carrot keeps the onion fly away and the onion fly keeps the carrot fly away, um, it actually really works well. So, and also, of course, to refrain to use biological pesticides. If you think of organic farming, it always says, well, we don't use uh, synthetic pesticides, but of course, um, it's also a big criticism against uh, organic agriculture. We use biological pesticides uh, if things go really the wrong, wrong way um, and a crop is uh, severely affected and uh, it would be like a negative economical output, um, organic farmers use um, biological pesticides. But vegan organic farmers really aim for not using them. So in, in contrast to that, passive plant protection is the way that means you have nettings, which you will pull over the crops. You have deterrents that actually just shoo uh, the, the so-called pests away. Or you have techniques of confusion where suddenly the so-called pest doesn't find the crop anymore. Or you have antagonistic organ organisms that actually kind of try to balance out uh, if you have too many pests. Um, Ian Tolhurst, uh, whom I will show later on, said um, the more species you have on the plot, the less likely one particular species will become a problem. So now I'm just switching into um, who's doing or who's promoting vegan organic agriculture. And I firstly have to name the Vegan Organic Network from um, the UK, they have, they are like a 
own growers association with their own standards and their own certification. They are running a directory, so you can actually go to veganorganic.net and find a vegan organic farm which is close to you. Um, there's also in North America the Veganic uh, Agriculture Network. Actually, most US people from here on the conference uh, will usually refer to the term of Veganic, um, but there are several synonyms uh, to it like vegan organic, veganic, stock-free organic. Um, they also all meet the same, basically. And in North America, you have both the, the, the Vaughan standards as well as the, the Veganic Agriculture Network standards. Also in North America, you have uh, One Degree Organics, which is a um, conglomerate of um, um, uh, farmers that uh, produce, um, for example, crops for muesli, or lentils, or uh, stuff like that. Um, and they're having their own brand, uh, and you can find them in the whole food shops. Also, we have, uh, which I am uh, mostly uh, representing uh, the Bioveganes Netzwerk in Germany, or uh, the German-speaking areas. Uh, that means Austria and the German-speaking part of Switzerland. Uh, we have the Biocyclic Vegan Network, uh, which is active in Greece and Cyprus. And we have now uh, like a new organization which is aiming to implement uh, vegan organic practices um, and bringing them to the consumers um, um, in Germany, also in the German-speaking parts, um, which is called Biocyclic Vegan Growing, more or less. Um, why is that so important to actually ident or to, to, to bring about standards that uh, will help to identify. I have brought here two pumpkins, and usually I have salads or something like that, and I usually ask the audience which of the uh, salad is vegan, and then you have the question mark above your head, and you think, ah, salad has, been, has always been vegan. What could not be vegan about a salad? Um, and um, yeah, but you see, uh, in the secondary line, you have uh, the whole field of animal agriculture, which is actually feeding the, um, the nutrients to the plant, um, plant growth, and as many people say, uh, it's impossible to, impossible to do otherwise. So I could tell you, well, one of them is vegan organic and the other isn't. And that, then you would have to trust on me. Um, then again, I could just put some label on it. I could say one is organic and the other is vegan organic. And that would actually bring you into the position to have a consumer choice. Um, in Germany, about 25% of the organic farms um, hardly keep any animal and use any animal inputs. So they're actually almost 80% vegan organic but you're not able to identify those products because there's no kind of transparent standard to it um, to, to really have this inspection uh, chain of line um, uh, that will um, inspect all area of organic production. That means both in the agricultural sector, both in the processing sector and the trade. Um, so the different vegan organic organizations are actually trying to implement that so animal rights activists or vegans um, can make a conscious consumer choice and thus stopping to indirectly um, keep the animal agricultural cycle going. I now want to uh, just present you, the, the, the vision is really bad, but um, uh, it's very important that it's not just something theoretical, it's something very, very practical. And we have practitioners of vegan organic agriculture all across the world. So uh, we have Bob Comas, of whom we will learn later. Uh, we have the team of the... Um, Gartnerhof Bienbüttel, which is in the northern part of Germany, where I come from. We have 
Um, Franz Haslinger, uh, which is a, a um, producer from close to Vienna. Uh, we have Daniel Hausmann, which is also a German vegan organic um, producer. We have Jenny Hall from Britain, who together with Ian Tolhurst wrote um, actually uh, almost a Bible on vegan organic uh, farming. And it's actually quite important to see that it's already in place, and that's uh, what, I'm ref uh, what I'm going to next. This, is, this means like using a deliberate push and pull strategy uh, for promoting vegan organic production. Push and pull are terms that come from marketing. And I'm not, I look like a marketing person, but I'm not. I'm an agriculturist, so um, I had uh, some time to kind of um, uh, dive into this, um, uh, this concept. So push strategy basically means that you make the consumer aware of a product by the means of advertisement. That means you deliver information you're making offers, and you're trying to satisfy needs. Um, you all know how marketing works and how advertisement works. And then you have the pull strategy. That means you try to establish an image of something that will raise demands on the consumer side, and then the consumer will put pressure on the retailers to tell them, you need to get me that product. So we need to raise awareness and use political or consumer power. In regard to vegan organic production, um, that means we need to inform vegans and animal rights activists that there are practical alternatives to, dominant for, to the dominant form of agriculture, including animal agriculture, that are already in place and to encourage them to support vegan organic production wherever possible. And then on the other side, on the, um, on the pull side, we have to form a vegan agricultural policy that in includes animal rights and env environmental positions. And to carry... Uh, this agricultural policy, which is kind of uh, implementing or, or uh, inherently um, referring to animal rights aspects and ac advocacy, uh, we have to carry this as a proposal and also as a demand into all areas of our society. That means to political decision makers, to legislatures, to the economy, to the trade, to environmental NGOs, etc. And um, to really kind of, um, yeah, to, to, to um, it's always about animal politics. Uh, we're talking um, often enough um, how to actually implement animal rights aspects into current society. Um, and that would be actually something very practical we could all do. And I just don't know how far we've gone now, but basically um, that was the thing I wanted to present to you and after the discussion, which we will have plenty of time probably now, um, you're very welcome to watch The Last Pig, which is actually kind of making the link between ending animal agriculture and what comes afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you for this. So, are there any questions? So, that was a really fascinating presentation. Thank you. Um, so, I have a question about the idea of <clears throat> basically allowing animals to live on the farm and not fencing them out or anything like that. So, I guess it's kind of a moral and a practical question. So, do, you know, is, is it a big problem with animals like eating crops? Does that become a problem for farmers or is that kind of overblown? And then it, is it kind of like a moral duty for us to, even if they cause some harm to the crops, we just have to kind of accept that and let animals live in 
you know, harmony with the farm and, and the ecosystem that surrounds it. Are you referring to farm animals, so animal sanctuaries? No, no, I think you wild mentioned... Wild animals. Yeah, I think you mentioned yeah. wild animals, right? Yeah, that yeah, that yeah. we should not be blocking them yeah. from coming into the farm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, always in terms of a certain extent, um, you will, or you should actually allow these interactions to have wild animals on the farm. Um, because um, although we tend to think that the land we're currently cultivating is ours, but we actually stole that from the natural world in, in some regard. So we actually should just um, try to find some sort of equilibrium where it's both economical, viable, um, and uh, ecological sound. Um, but I, I want to uh, add to that because that's what, why I was asking. Um, the Vegan Organic Network from Britain says no farm animals on the farm um, because their feces is not to be used in the animal production. So you would have actually to bring that away as a waste and that, that is ecologically and uh, recycling wise totally unsound. And with a bicyclic vegan farming, uh, we are doing a different approach. We're saying people are allowed um, to keep animals, but it is totally prohibited to sell these animals um, for slaughter um, or to use their products economically. Um, because we think that we have to make a, um, yeah, a transformation. And in that, we have to approach non-vegans, non-vegan producers who say, okay, I can, I can relate to the vegan organic production system, but I, I'm, yet, I'm not yet there, I'm not vegan. Um, and maybe I have farm animals that are there since the beginning of time, um, and I want them to keep uh, there, especially if we look at um, Latin America, Asia, um, Asia um, and Africa, where people have very close bonds to, um, to the animals they are keeping, of course, um, um, for their livelihoods. So we're actually making a proposal by uh, producing in that way, you can make an extra buck but you have to stop exploiting your animals. You're allowed to keep them um, because actually we, cherish, we all cherish human-animal relationships and uh, we're, um, um, we're taking something out of that, um, but we shouldn't take something economical out of that. Um, so uh, that's kind of uh, a, different, different, uh, a difference between the vegan organic network standards and our standards, uh, which we're currently promoting. Yep. Uh, thank you for the wonderful talk. Um, I, what I have in my mind is that the German V Party uh, plans to have be, uh, yeah, veganic uh, agriculture by 2030, I think. Uh, how realistically do you see this and where do you see the, the problems? Or how, how easy would it be to switch and can we feed all the people with this? Well, we are trying to uh, currently gain momentum and to use potentials that are, really, that are already there. Um, if theoretically 20, all the 25% of, uh, of the organic farms that are currently already 80% vegan organically, um, would switch to our standards that uh, yet wouldn't be 30% of the total agriculture because organic farming only takes up 6% currently. Um, but it would be a step forward. And um, in general, I think um, there's, the, there's a still ongoing discourse about what we do about animal agriculture in Germany, for example. And there's many, many voices that uh, say, for example, also ProVeg, saying we have to cut at least 
animal agriculture by half by the year 2050. Um, so agriculture in general is actually uh, currently adapting to the fact that we actually need less animals in production. If I may, I have a seven, second question. As a street campaigner, uh, we sometimes get into arguments with uh, uh, farmers and obviously they're interested in the yields or they say it's impossible. So can you say anything about the, the yields? Um, their, their yields vary from not too large to kind of uh, average uh, what organic businesses are yielding. Um, but then again, I was uh, mentioning biointensive farming, uh, which is a concept that you might have heard. Um, it's actually um, growing as much yield uh, on as little space as possible. And um, the, the concept is actually stemming from the biosphere Biosphere 2 project, where they try to self-sufficiently um, 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 grow food um, to, to have that adapted to, for example, a Mars expedition or whatever. And it's actually scientifically quite proven that if you have farm animals in the system, you're not producing um, efficiently um, sustainable uh, and um, yield-wise um, en enough calories um, which you could actually get from the land. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering what you thought about um, the idea of um, humans becoming separate from these animals um, by not having them um, on farms. So I've come across um, a lot of um, permaculture people that um, have animals on their land, mm. but they still consume the milk and eggs and things like that and view them as more of like a, um, a product rather than or something that can, can you know um, mm. rather than a living being and I was wondering how you would counter that because f like, like from an ecological um, perspective uh, well that's actually more like a ethical discourse um, I believe uh, people need to confront perm permaculturists with uh, Nicole Vosper and uh, Graham Burnett uh, who are um, very active in liberation permaculture, uh, which is kind of a vegan permaculture, um, are um, strongly promoting uh, this approach. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, this is like um, a bit like the traditional thinking of living of the land. Um, so you actually just um, can take whatever that is there um, without limiting yourself to ethical decisions. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been quite af active in the permaculture movement and there's always been uh, this discourse. But it actually is, isn't that much different to if you're uh, talking to organic, organic farm holders who still um, are having their uh, mixed systems, so they have animal husbandry, and they have uh, arable cropping, and they have a garden, and they have a compost heap, and that. So it's actually more or less the same uh, as with uh, organic producers, the same discourse. Yeah. yeah, thanks for your talk. How would you answer the question if someone questions you, how to feed, uh, can we feed the entire world uh, organic, vegan? I'm usually uh, countering that question with, um, with the graphs I've been showing you today. Um, we're currently producing very, very inefficiently calories, food calories, and we use a major part of our arable land that could be used to growing food crops. Um, and unless we haven't solved that problem, I think it's futile to talk about anything else. Also, 
we have the, 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 the amount of waste that is, um, is discarded between the production and the buying of the produce. So we have like 20-30% of food waste that could actually um, be stopped, basically, through better distribution systems and uh, also due to consumer awareness to uh, go for the product that isn't the apple that isn't that shiny but that has some spots and dots on it. Yeah. So I think we have time for one more question. If there is another question. Okay. Yeah, thanks for all the information. Very, very informative. Uh, we're all consumers, I'm a consumer, and I like the idea that my carrots, for my carrots and my onions, uh, no animal products are used as well. But do you have any suggestions right now what we can do as consumers to, to enhance this? Or do you think it has to come from people like you who are informing the farmers and the shops? Um, well, just as I said, uh, we need to raise uh, demand for that produce. Because if you say, if you go to your local farmer and say, I mean, in a polite way, um, I want that produce be produced in that, in that way, or to get engaged in agriculture through a, a community supported agriculture, for example, um, that would be a way. Um, I, I mean, I've been working for a decade to get producers closer to consumers and step by step. And now we're kind of on the brink of bringing about, uh, at least for Germany and uh, for the future also um, on, the, on the international level, um, a standard that is also regarded in the, eco, uh, in the organic uh, food sector. I've been talking to so many people from the organic food sector in Germany and they're quite open about it. They say, okay, on, and unless you're not criticizing animal agriculture too much, which I'm doing here on an animal rights conference, if I go to an organic farmers, I usually don't do that. Um, but then um, they're saying, okay, that's giving another niche to the whole organic food business. Um, and that's quite interesting because um, all food manufacturers, all traders, they're always constantly looking to get another profile, to go regional, to go seasonal, to uh, have an extra eco blah, 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 plus. Um, and so they're actually quite inclined uh, to getting into this. And um, yeah, on the other side, look, uh, the Vegan Organic Network has uh, a farm directory um, look at there, uh, look into this if you have a farm close by and send your friends to it because these producers, they need you to buy off their produce because otherwise they can't do that economically. Um, the Webu, the ProVeg, in, uh, has a German list um, with farms and we're currently building up a network uh, with our farms as well um, and some of these farms are large and some of these farms are small, um, so you can either go to them um, and uh, buy from the farm shop, or soon enough you will be able to uh, find the produce and the label in the supermarkets, and that's what you're actually aiming for. So about all dif distribution chains, we're trying to um, shove in produce so consumers can actually um, buy the stuff off and if that gets that practical that the consumer can buy it, um, it makes sense to the consumer. Unless he can't do that, it's a nice concept, which I have experienced often enough. All people said, yeah, really cool thing, yeah. Uh, but where can I buy the produce? Ah, 300 kilometers, that's too far. Well, then I wait and just leave it there. Mm. So if any question arises, I'll be having a stall over there mostly with German literature, but um, I will refer you to the Vegan Organic Network 
um, and we can have a chat over there. But now we're going to the cinema. Isn't it that, Alison? Okay. Thank you, Daniel.